can I can I share something with you? Generally, I would probably want to um, express this during our Trust in the Lord hour or one of our pulpit of power hours, but I think it's important that some of you that don't listen to those venues or those broad broadcasts would hear this. I, 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 I had a, a dream, actually it was a vision, uh, not long ago where Almighty God allowed me to use a scope, a, a vision scope, uh, like a telescope to look into deep space. And in, in this vision scope that God gave me, I was able to look into the deep prison, uh, what is commonly referred to by most humans as hell or a Hades or some place where the deceased spirits of those that once inhabited the earth rest until there is a, a prophesied move of God, whether you're Buddhist or Hindu, or and the whether there's a reincarnation or whether there's a resurrection. Uh, and of course, there is no reincarnation. There is a resurrection. But I'll reference the reincarnation because I want to be able to grab, bring all people to this understanding. But God let me look at the place where either the reincarnation or the resurrection takes place from a period, a place known as hell. And in that vision that I saw using that scope, looking into this place that exists, uh, in real in real time, I saw two people that were once members of our congregation, they were both women, once members of the congregation. I was once their pastor, um, and they, they they left the ministry, they left the church for reasons that I, I think basically religion uh, that they were more interested in religion than they were in righteousness, and they were more interested and loose living than they were in being led by the word of God. And they left. They both died and ended up in hell together. And in hell, the, the place was jam-packed with dark spirits of the dark side. It's, it was a dark place. It was a contained place. It was a place where they could not escape from, as if they were in some sort of metal uh, container or in something sort of like a, if you will, a nuclear plant. They couldn't escape. And they could not escape each other. And they, they had a disagreement while they were yet in the flesh, and they carried that disagreement all the way down into hell, and they were fighting in hell, these two. But they weren't the only ones, but... I focused on these two because I knew them. And the one woman gave the other woman a, 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 a hit her with a punch that would knock out Rocky Marciana and Joe Lewis at the same time in a ricochet. And the woman that was hit swung back with a vicious sense of anger in their swinging. But all around them were these spirits. Some were spirits of debauchery, it was a dark, slimy place. I don't know if you ever see the pool of tadpoles. But it was a, all these spirits of the dead that collected the drug addicts, the liars, the thieves, the politicians, the false prophets, the prostitutes. All that was all collected in one place and they could not escape from one another. I just happened to focus on the two members that I knew that were there in hell. It was hell. It was hell. It was hell. And there was no relief. There was no release. And everybody fighting for their own survival, as God showed it to me. I want to read a verse from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. And Peter wrote this verse. And you have to understand in this verse that Peter writes, Jesus had given to Peter the keys to the kingdom. And Jesus has said, whatever Peter binds on earth shall be agreed to in heaven. And whatever Peter binds on earth shall be, uh, uh, it shall be abound. In other words, heaven and earth shall, shall, heaven shall say yes to everything that Peter says, whether he binds it or, or gives loosing to it. And Peter writes, and um, uh, in first uh, Peter Chapter 3, verse 19. And he's talking about Jesus. 
Uh, what's the verse out of verse 18? For Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. And that's what I saw. I saw the spirits in prison. Can I say something to you? You don't want to go. You don't want to go. Even if on earth you have Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and, and Bill Gates, their money, their yachts, their houses, their prerogatives, their power, their influence as something that you have gained here on earth, it isn't worth it to have any of that if you're going to end up in hell. The days of, a, of man's life on planet Earth are very short. They're like a, they're like a breath and like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. But the time you spend in hell has no ending, no days, no nights. There is no promise of an ending. There is no promise of relief. Just torment, 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 torment. Nothing, nothing, no amount of money, no amount of fame, nothing, nothing that earth can give you or that the devil can give you is worth one second in hell. It is a hell of a hell. Jesus didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. He, he actually sweat blood. Uh, 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 sweats of drops of blood were coming from him when he understood he had to go to hell. I'm telling you, you don't want to go. You need to get right with God. You don't want to go. I don't care what you think you're doing now. And by the way, by the way, the quickest way to get to hell is through most churches on planet Earth. That is the quickest elevator to hell. Just go to any Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Catholic, you name it, Church of God in Christ, you go to any of these. That's the quickest way to hell is through, the, is through these institutions. Let me not call them churches, but these institutions, these religious institutions. And the quickest mandate to get you to hell is become a religious person. The devil himself trembles and is not satisfied. He's not happy. And he himself ultimately will be thrown both death and hell and the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire. Now, the Bible says that the devil was put in a separate place called a bottomless pit where he just couldn't stop falling, couldn't stop to get a drink of water, couldn't stop to get, a, get anything to eat, just in a bottomless pit for a thousand years, there was no stopping. God, an angel threw the devil into the bottomless pit. You know, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, you can act cute if you want. You can run around here with the LGBTQ if you like. You can run around here seeking fame and fortune and money if you want. It ain't hardly worth one second. You can live a hundred years with all the fame and power of those that got fame and power. Trust me. If you, could, if you could barter that away, even the people in hell right now, if they could barter away one second of, of relief, if they could just get relief from the hell that they're in right now, they'd give all of Bill Gates money for just one second, knowing the next second they got to go back to it. But they'd give up that one, they'd give up every dollar that Bill Gates, every dollar that Bill, Jeff Bezos, every power that you think people that got power, fame, and fortune, they'd give it all up for just one second of being able to escape the torment of hell. You don't want to go, I'm telling you. And death is coming to you. Death is coming to you. And from there to hell. And from there to judgment and the lake of fire. You don't want to go. You want to get right with God. I'm telling you, you don't want to go. You don't want to go. But God allowed me to see these two women who left the church because I preach righteousness. And I preach the tithe and the Sabbath day that's personal to God. 
Don't offend him on this day. Don't get smart mouth with God and offend him on his day. That's his day, the Sabbath. That's his day. And that tithe, you rob God, that belongs to him. That's personal for him. That belongs to him. That's his personal requirement of you, both the Sabbath and the tithe. You don't want to go to hell. Me, I'm James David Manning. I'm the Lord's servant, a preacher of righteousness. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.